Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig here at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 31 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the recently constructed and now finished attitude director indicator. We'll run some tests to run through its various functionality and then we'll install it into the front dash frame and bring it online. Let's buckle up. So in the previous video in this series, we took some time to look at the overall design and the possible component selection and some of the key developmental areas to work through. In terms of the three warning flags and the pitch trim, that was really straightforward in so much as I would use three millimeter red LEDs and rotary encoder. However, there were three other main development areas. The first was the main sphere, but after a bit of a journey and a lot of revisions and testing uh, I arrived at the use of NEMA motors and a workable version of that. Next was a glide slope indicator, slip ball position and turn needle and it was my intention, my plan to display this information on an OLED and after a collaboration with Caron at Fly and Wire we were able to achieve this. And finally the steering bars and that was to be achieved through a servo cam design which would create that linear motion needed to move the bars and this one went through quite some evolution in so much as the the principle of that design is quite finicky and this needed some refinements so i'd like to say thank you to my father-in-law phil as we spent quite a lot of time on this so with all of the design and development done to this point I've now been able to pull all of that together and construct the panel. We'll now take a look at this and I'll be running some tests just to run through all of its functionality and then we can install it into the front dash frame and bring it online. So let's power that on. And we'll just do the start up again from a side view. The position of the trigger arms for zero detection of the two axes of the sphere at startup will determine if there's an initial rotation. So sometimes at startup the sphere is already aligned perfectly and other times one or both of the axes will rotate. So we'll just take a moment to pan round and have a view of the panel, but also the RS485 network that controls it. For this panel and the HSI panel, I can't imagine interfacing it without an RS485 network. The number of COM ports that would have otherwise been used would have been 14 across the two panels. Whereas in this case, even by dedicating an RS485 network to each, it's therefore just two, which is a great simplification of connection. So I'll just bring in my test laptop and we can see this in operation. So we'll just take a bit of time to look at the pitch and roll of the instrument in line with the aircraft and what we can see in the sim. I think it was definitely worth the extra time to get both of the axis running on stepper motors. It definitely gives it a smoother movement. The stepper motors have been running well and I did spend a bit of time being sure I got the balance right to the voltage setting on the easy driver board just so that they're getting enough current that they need so the shaft doesn't slip but equally they don't run too hot. Now we'll just unstow the steering bars and one of the things I really like that when as a positive alongside the really sharp movement you get at the servos 
is what we can see now, which is as that steering bar shoots into position on the instrument, it mirrors that really well against the sim. And we'll just move the ADI into a clear position here on the screen. And let's just have a look at the movement of that steering bar for bank. Yeah, pleased with the alignment and the movement of that. So I'll just stow the steering bar and then I'm going to look to cut the AC generators. And doing so puts the ADI in a particular state. And let's just have a look at that now. I'm really liking that. That's cool. And mirrors the sim nicely. Now we are close to an airfield, so we'll just fly over the the ILS beacon. Something that was on my mind for this panel was lighting, and that's both flood lighting and backlighting. So during the build, I've incorporated both of these into the panel, and we will take a, a closer look at that now. And what I didn't appreciate until I saw them in use is how different each of them are. The first is a flood light, which just projects a light onto the instrument, onto the sphere. And we'll just bring that into a better focus. So there's a functionality of the floodlight in present on this panel should I wish to use it. However, I can't say that the aesthetic of it really strikes me. However, by contrast, the backlighting, which is lighting internal to the actual sphere itself, that, by contrast, is to great effect, and we'll just take a look at that now. And now this is exactly what I wanted, so we'll go ahead and bring it into a clearer focus. Now let's just adjust that again, just so the camera can see the same as what I can see. That's it, and that is exactly what I was looking for and hoping for within the backlighting of this panel. This is how I imagined it, and it was well worth the time and effort to, as well as the floodlight, to incorporate another light that's backlighting its internal to the sphere itself. Yeah, I'm really stoked about how that looks. So we'll just pan round again the exterior of the panel and just have a look at it whilst it's all powered up, backlit and in use. So in some initial testing of nighttime operations, I'm really impressed with the aesthetic. So we'll go ahead and cut the AC generators again, 
and just have a look at the effect of that in these conditions of backlit instrument flying. Brilliant. So before we install this panel into the front dash, we'll finish the testing by just having a look at both of the steering bars. So as can be seen, I'm just diverting to a nearby airfield. So we'll just select ILS as a navigation mode. It will likely be a little bit fiddly with this keyboard, but what we'll do, we'll head towards the airfield. Along the way, we'll see the moving indicator for the glide slope, and we'll be able to intercept the pitch steering bar. So we'll get to see both of those steering bars working in unison. So there's a mark now present on the glide slope. Now let's just dive down to, to intercept that. And just one moment. And we'll just get a better view of the ADI in the sim. And that'll make it better and easier to have a side by side view of the two. And there's the indicator moving. And the steering bar. So if we just chase that up and down and we can see the range of motion of the bars. The alignment looks good, I will just calibrate it a little further before installing it into the front dash. The use of pitch trim is really handy for this panel because there is a consideration for line of sight based on seating position. Yeah, so really pleased with the implementation of those steering bars well worth all the effort to get that functionality in place. So it's now time to go ahead and install the panel into the front dash. And there we go. There was a little bit more to the installation of this panel than most. Because of the weight of it and the length and the higher position it holds within the frame, I did design in 3D print some special brackets that held legs that had held in place a platform to support it and if we pan around now we can see the overall internals of the sim pit front dash to this point so at this stage in the front dash build there's quite a bit going on there right let's power it up and bring it online so that's a panel implemented into the Simpit and all powered on and up and running and now completed. In reflecting on this build, it's one that certainly took a fair amount of time and for that reason it was spread over quite a period of months and there were certain points in the development where because I had to stop and rethink something or order parts to take it in a different direction or to refine it, I came to like an impasse and at that point I'd perhaps spend that time on a completely different bit of the sim pit and then come back to it so yeah it was a really a question of time for this one and patience. Quite often the build process will follow from the design through to some testing with a couple of refinements sometimes um, and then the actual construction and implementation but I think the that sort of refinement part of the process for this panel 
was far more involved than the others and required far more revisions. In terms of initial research, there wasn't really a lot out there about such a build, so it really was a question of just putting things together, making them work, and then correcting deficiencies. And I'm really happy with the outcome and really glad to get some flight timing on it now. In the near future I'll be looking at the front dash brow and I'll look forward to sharing that soon. Thanks for watching.